Well, uh, some bad news coming out of YouTube today. Apparently, they plan on censoring uh, anyone who does not tout the Western line on the war in Ukraine. Um, I'm just going to have to take my chances. I don't care if I end up being only on BitChute and Rumble. That's fine. Uh, even though I just started a Rumble account recently, I have, like, nobody on there. So, I mean, if you want, go go, go uh, subscribe to me on Rumble uh, and BitChute or, or one of them, whichever one you like. Uh, I've been on BitChute a lot longer. Because, you know, if I get kicked off for this, so so be it. I'm not going to stop talking about the war in Ukraine. I'm not going to start parroting the Western narrative because that's boring. It's very difficult right now to find people uh, who are not parroting, who have any sort of independent perspective on this war. And, uh, you know, being being against wars is kind of like a defining thing for this channel. Always has been since I started it. I think my second, the first thing that I really got into on this channel that I did a whole series of videos on uh, was, uh, you know, the long coup, the attempt to install Juan Guaido <laughs> as president of Venezuela and how, you know, hilariously, um, you know, failed it was. But at the time, we didn't know that it was going to be a hilarious failure. It was potentially the next American war. And there were real talks about that when, when Trump was president, about going to war with Venezuela and going to war with Iran. And I was against all of it. And since back then, you know, Trump was president, it was a little easier to be against wars. Uh, back then, it was more that this stuff was kind of ignored by the media. They weren't, so they weren't you know, pounding the tables and, and beating the war drums so strong to help Trump start wars in these two countries. There wasn't... Uh, you know, as much a coordinated pro-war um, media campaign like we're seeing now. But now, because we're seeing such a strong push for America to enter this war on the side of Ukraine, which, make no mistake about it, they, they're making it overtly now. That is, the wall-to-wall -wall news coverage now is, is trying to prime people for this. It's trying to get Americans ready to go to war with Russia, which is suicidal. We used to understand that. During the Cold War, people understood war with Russia is not an option. Now that uh, the Cold War is supposedly over, now for some reason, war with Russia has become an option. And if YouTube wants to ban me or take down these videos um, because I say that that's not an option, that nuclear war would be the end of mankind, that it would be uh, you know, th the greatest catastrophe in human history by far, you know, way worse than the Holocaust. Yes, there are things worse than the Holocaust. A nuclear Holocaust would be worse than the World War II Holocaust. The potential for nuclear winter, which is a very real potential. Yes, I understand. Oh, it hasn't happened before. That's what the pro-nuclear war folks, the blue checks on Twitter are saying. Yes, I'm not kidding. There are people saying, oh, well, nuclear war is just a theory. It has been proven. We need to test that. We need to launch an all-out nuclear war uh, in, on this planet to prove if there's going to be nuclear winter or not. But of course, before we can get to, to nuclear war, we have to have uh, uh, Casas Belli, which will apparently be... Ask me, or stop me if you've heard this one before. A gas attack on innocent civilians. I know, I know, it seems ridiculous. They're reusing... Uh, the same old, uh, you know, talking point that they used to justify um, all the wars of my lifetime. Literally, since I've been born, I was born in the late 90s. I grew up in the 2000s. Uh, weapons of mass destruction, namely chemical weapons, was the justification for going into Iraq. Just the suspicion that Saddam Hussein might have them. Not that he was going to use them. They just said, well, Saddam Hussein might have chemical weapons. So we're going to go into uh, Iraq, which, by the way, by that standard, Russia's invasion of Ukraine totally justified because apparently uh, Ukraine had chemical weapons based on what Victoria Nuland uh, told uh, Marco Rubio or biological or chemical weapons or whatever. And if that's the case, well, then I guess we're, you're allowed to invade sovereign countries that have weapons of mass destruction, aren't you? You know, it's not like Dick Cheney or George Bush or Condoleezza Rice are, um, you know, serving a, a life in prison for their war crimes. And it's not like they've been sentenced to death for their war crimes. We've been told, no, those weren't war crimes because that was a justifiable war. 
Then, skipping over a few wars, moving a few years down the road, we had the 2011 uh, war in Libya, the no-fly zone, which you hear Zelensky in the Ukraine lobby talking about ceaselessly, talking about this no-fly zone, which is uh, a code, of course, for World War III, just like a no-fly zone in Libya was a code for a war in Libya. You know, we all, we all understand that now. The U.S., uh, France, and Britain, those were the main folks, went to war with Gaddafi's government. The justification? Uh, it was that Gaddafi was about to go genocidal, <laughs> whatever that means, that he was going to uh, unleash a wave of mass destruction. Now, they, they, could, they didn't really try and say that he was going to use weapons of mass destruction because he gave up his chemical weapons uh, years ago, trying to, he was trying to appease the Americans so that they would, you know, uh, put off murdering him for a few years, which they did for a couple of years, and then 2011 came, and Hillary decided it was time uh, for him to die. And so, as she most famously put, we came, we saw, he died. It's as simple as that. And so, uh, you know, if, if Libya is any justification, uh, or is any precedent, we're supposed to believe, well, even somebody who's given up their chemical weapons, but who, quote, may go genocidal, whatever that means, uh, we can be justified in starting a war. And that was wrong. That was wrong back then, okay? So then we come to Syria and the famous Syrian red line that was drawn by Obama. Now, Obama said, we won't get involved in the war in Syria, but if Assad uses, stop me if you've heard this one before, chemical weapons, if Assad gasses his own people, just like Hitler, well, that'd be a red line we'd have to intervene. And wouldn't you know, lo and behold, supposedly, Assad then gassed his own people right after Obama said that. And I say supposedly because, again, stop me if you've heard this before. We found out not too long after that, oh yeah, the, the, that whole story about Assad using weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons against his own people, yeah, it was total BS. And so now we come all the way to 2022, and we're told by Senator Marco Rubio, Russia is going to use chemical weapons or biological weapons, weapons that uh, apparently uh, were actually Ukraine's, but that Russia, I guess, is going to capture and then use because Russia doesn't have their own chemical or biological weapons. They need to steal those weapons from the Ukrainians, which had them for only defensive purposes, we're told. These are, to these are defensive biological weapons. This is a defensive super virus that would create a global pandemic if released. Totally defensive. There is nothing offensive about it. And now, if, uh, if these weapons are at all used, we're told 100% it's going to be Russia, and we have to go to war over it. Just like we had to go to war in Iraq, just like we had to go to war in Libya, just like we had to go in Syria. And even though all of those, uh, those past three cases where we had the almost the exact same story changed the details around a little bit here and there but it was the same idea it was the same spirit it was the same uh, it was the same emotions that they were trying to evoke in the american people all three of those cases turned out to be disasters all three of those cases turned out to pretty much be lies um, but don't worry it's different this time we promise if i have to believe that drivel to maintain my position on YouTube, which, you know, hey, I, I have very little position on YouTube to begin with. I have very little to lose. I have a thousand subscribers, but I worked a long time and very hard work and put, making, putting stuff out seven days a week for many years. What's it been like, four years? Something like that. But I don't care. I don't, I'm very much willing to throw all of that hard work in the trash. Um, if it means that I would have to uh, just start parroting this nonsense. Like, I have a brain. I'm going to use it. This isn't very hard. I'm not a genius. But I refuse to parrot their war propaganda. And, you know, if the worst thing that happens to me is I get my YouTube channel deleted, uh, th that's okay. I'm not going to an internment camp. Now, if they threaten me with an internment camp, um, or with jail time, which the U.S. has done to anti-war people in the past, you know, then maybe I'll shut my mouth. 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to go that hardcore. There's there's other people who will do it first. I don't need to stick my neck out. It's just it, strategically, it wouldn't be smart. I don't have enough of a platform to uh, for it to be worth my while to try and you know get my voice out there. You know, I'm not that important, in other words, to to throw my life away. <laughs> but as long as it's no real cost to my life, um, you know, I'm not worried about. Uh, about losing my job you know uh, i work i don't work for some big corporate uh conglomerate who if they found my youtube channel they would go oh, you you're a putin puppet we refuse to have you working for us you know i especially you know when looking back at how youtube has um they cracked down really hard on anyone who spread quote election misinformation and i did i don't know how many videos on the 2020 election um, before YouTube introduced that retroactive policy. And I think they've only removed like two or three of my videos, which, you know, were put out over the course of many months. So I had a lot of stuff about the 2020 election on this channel. You can still find most of it. You know, some of the, you know, a couple of good ones have been taken down. Um, in fact, you know, a weird one, one where I was very critical of Sidney Powell where I basically said, you know, that she was a kooky conspiracy theorist. I don't, I didn't use that term because, you know, I don't like, the, you know, the term conspiracy theorist is, is itself disinformation. I mean, that, that, that's a pure propaganda term, but I don't want to get into that right now. But somehow that one got taken down by YouTube. So, you know, I'm still small enough to where I'm not on anybody's radar. I, 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 I'm okay. I think saying, saying mostly, you know, whatever I want. I don't swear. I don't uh, call people nasty names. I just talk about wars and why I think they're a bad idea and why we shouldn't be involved in them, including this war. I hope, I want, it, even if I can just, you know, reach one or two people and, you know, splash, not wake them up, but splash a little water on their face and say, you know what? You don't have to buy into this. It's okay. To question it you're not crazy they're crazy because they oh, either that or they think you're stupid probably both and you're not like some heartless putin puppet if you want to avoid this war that they're pushing right now you're the compassionate one they're not their so-called compassion will result in the deaths of millions and millions of people that is the end result you institute a no-fly zone in, 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 I almost said in Syria. Um, same actually would have been true in Syria because those were Russian jets that the U.S. would have been shooting down. Uh, but you institute a no-fly zone in Ukraine, and the entire world can be over in a week. I, don't, I wouldn't say a day. I don't think it would take a day. I think that there would be, I think that the escalation, because people understand the, the significance and, the, you, know, uh, you know, and at least the Russian side understands nukes are not, you know, not something you use lightly. But if the U.S. really starts shooting down Russian jets, in Ukraine, let alone send troops in. We're not going to get that far. We wouldn't get that far. Um, U.S. starts sending in uh, or starts shooting down Russian planes in Ukraine. The Russians, uh, they shoot off a tactical nuke as a warning to say, hey, we're using nuclear weapons. Don't screw with us. The U.S. will then continue to shoot down their planes or even worse, use their own nukes which the U.S. has plenty of nukes in Europe. Then at the very least, the European continent um, is destroyed. And when I say I think that it would start with the Russians using potentially a tactical nuke, um, I mean probably in, in an open field, probably somewhere where they're not going to kill a bunch of people or maybe just like on some isolated base. Uh, they're not going to be lobbing at it like Berlin. The, it, we don't go from America shoots down a Russian jet to... Uh, the uh, the Russians uh, level Berlin, but it'll reach that stage pretty quickly, because I think that once the Russians um, fire off that warning shot of a tactical nuke, you know, probably whatever the smallest nuke is in their uh, in their arsenal, the U.S. will escalate very quickly from there, and it will be the end of us, because if uh, let's say we get to the point of escalation to where the U.S. fires a nuke into Russian territory, 
the Russians will retaliate then by firing a nuke into American territory, not just in Europe. They will fire an intercontinental ballistic missile into America and nuke some American city. And at that point, it's that's all out. It's everybody's they're going to everyone. Both sides are going to fire all of their missiles at each other. We're all dead. And even if you're um, not directly in the blast zone, you know, you're going to fall out. Uh, you're going to have all the crops dead. You're going to starve. You're going to get cancer. It's <laughs> there's no winning here. OK. And these people, it's disgusting. I mean, there's no I, I would say I would love to sit down with them and like ask them, what are you thinking? <laughs> How does this end? Well, but they're not thinking. There's no, there's no, there's no reason there to interact with. They don't have a mind of their own. They're zombies. They're warlike zombies. And we can't let them destroy us all. That's really what they're talking about. We're, we're that close. I mean, this is, we're a, I hesitate to compare it to the Cuban Missile Crisis because the circumstances are different, but the risks are quite comparable. Once we, if we get to the point, let's just say, the next stage from here would be an no-fly zone. After whatever, after whatever, let's say the, I, I'll put it this way. Right now, I do, if there's a chemical attack, Rubio said 100%, if there's a chemical attack, that's the Russians. Victoria Newland said, oh yeah, because they said that, I believe at least 70% uh, it won't be the Russians. There's a 30% chance it could be the Russians. They could just be dumb or it could be an accident. Uh, but there's a 70% chance that uh, if there is some chemical attack that's blamed on the Russians, that that's a false flag. I'm not saying 100%, so YouTube, you know, maybe you don't censor me. I'm just saying it's more likely than not at this point because of the, the way that the narrative has been crafted. It's just like Syria. It is Syria all over again, which Syria was... Uh, you know, an evolution of Libya, which was an evolution of Iraq. Stage one, Iraq, uh, was Saddam has weapons of mass destruction. Then it became, oh, uh, nah, Gaddafi's about to go genocidal, whatever that means. But that's worse than just having weapons. That's saying he's using his weapons and he's committing genocide. Then Assad, uh, or he's about to commit genocide. Then Assad, oh, Assad is actively using weapons of mass destruction to wage a genocide against his own people. This time we're going to see something, we're going to see some sort of uh, propaganda that is at least as bad as what they claimed Assad did. And you know what? There is a conflict within the administration between the Pentagon and the State Department. The folks in the State Department, 100 uh, percent, would le lead us into a nuclear war. Tony Blinken has made that clear. He wanted Poland to send jets uh, to Ukraine. The people who put a stop to that well, were the folks at the Pentagon, from, from what I understand. And so maybe the folks at the Pentagon, you know, maybe if they were given the order, uh, they would not launch the missiles. But then again, I think that under most circumstances, the Russians will probably the, be the ones to use nukes first. But I think they'll use, them, you know, on a very small scale. Now, who, who knows? Maybe that's just my American bias against the Russians to saying that the Russians would go nuclear first. I think the Russians would go nuclear first in a non um in a non uh, game changing way, yeah, you know, they would do it just to say, "Hey, we have nukes." <laughs> just a reminder. But once that happens, I think that the escalation is unstoppable, uh, and that you know, even the folks in the Pentagon, to the extent that there are some cool heads left, um, I think at that point, uh, even they would go along with it. Because remember, the folks in the Pentagon are not anti-war by any means; they're just they have some common sense and understand that nuclear war would destroy the planet. So, excuse me if you can hear me sniffling a little bit uh, in the background. I, uh, I have a bit of an allergy issue at the moment. So to wrap things up, um, the rhetoric that we're seeing ever since Rubio had that fateful interaction with Victoria Newland is extremely concerning. Uh, the entire media just, well, actually reminds me of the buildup to this war, how the entire media and the administration we're acting like it was a foregone conclusion. Russia is going to invade Ukraine. It's going to happen. They're going to take over. All hope is lost. Uh, we're pulling our we're pulling our embassy out before 
there's any sort of military hostilities or anything. Um, and it was like, oh my gosh, why are you people acting like there's going to be this war? That didn't necessarily have to be it. There was no reason why there had to be that war. They just, you know, they basically were goading Putin into it and they were inviting him to do it. You know, and, and they really were acting, they were with total certainty, this is going to happen. And then it happened. Now they're acting with total certainty that there's going to be a chemical weapons attack and Putin's going to do it. And so um, that makes me think that not saying that Putin is going to do it. I, I told you, I think there's a 70% chance that the Russians will not, at least. And I'm being generous to the Americans by saying a 70%. Um, 70% chance that the Russians will not be the ones to um, perpetrate whatever the chemical or biological attack is. But there's, of course, a 100% chance that it will be blamed on them. Marco Rubio told us as much. And it's already being blamed on them long before it has ever happened. And so they're telling us they're going to try and suck us into war. And they have to do it before uh, all hope is lost in Ukraine. Because from what I understand, um, the, the battle in the east is... Uh, Things are moving in Russia's favor rapidly. Once the 60,000 troops in the east are neutralized, uh, it, will, it will be um, a matter of time before the war is over and things resolve in Russia's favor. And so the whole war propaganda campaign uh, has to be accelerated. It has to, uh, it has to move quickly in order to get America involved before everything is all over. And, you know, if I were in Putin's position, I would be considering this. Um, I would look at it and say, you know what? I really need to wrap things up before uh, the Americans have a chance to propagandize their citizens into getting involved with this. So I guess I'll end it there. Um, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.